Hello and welcome to my video to help you make your own lingerie. If you've followed me on the sewing directory, I've produced so far two articles and there will be a third in the series. The, third, the first article looked at how to draft your own basic panties block and part two, and this video is here to support you on part two, is how to sew your panties um, together. Now, if you didn't get round to drafting your own basic block, I have actually drafted a range of blocks for you in a size 8 to 22 UK and a size um, 4 to 18 US sizing. So you can head over to my blog page. I'll pop a link to my blog page where you can get your free panties basic shape and also a link to the sewing directory articles in the information below the video. So whether you want to just sew a pair of panties or whether you want to join me on the three part series, uh, let, let's take a look at what we can do. Let's have a look at what the blocks look like when they're cut out and almost ready to use. If you've drafted a basic block or if you pick up a basic block, it's a basic shape with no style detail added at all. We'll do that in part three of our um, article series. So we do need to add seam allowance. If you take a look here, I've added seam allowance to my crutch seam on the back. No seam allowance here on the hem edge, this is the leg, because we're going to bind that edge. I've got seam allowance on my side seam, just a small amount because I'm going to use an overlocker or a serger, but you can add extra if you want to just stitch with a regular sewing machine. A small amount, half a centimetre on my waist because I'm going to pop knicker elastic on there. Also I've got my gusset piece and I've added a centimetre on the seam allowance on the back gusset and the front gusset seam. Too much the centimetre here and also here. Now as you can see my pattern pieces, I've placed my basic block on a folded piece of paper so that when I fold it out I have a whole pattern piece and I prefer a whole pattern piece to work with. It's how you'd work if you were working in an industry setting and particularly with lingerie if you're making something with a very patterned uh, fabric you don't want big blobs of colour in strategic areas um, so that just helps you place the pattern or the stripes, match the stripes wherever you like them. Uh, rather than just making a wild guess and hoping they turn out in the right place. So we're ready to cut out. I'm going to cut these out now and then I can show you how to sew them together. Okay, so let's look at fabric selection. Originally, I was going to, well, hoping to use this fabric here. However, <laughs> I looked at it and it's very stretchy. The stretch percentage on this one is uh, about 70%. So too much for the pattern that I've drafted because I've allowed for a jersey um, of about up to 25% stretch but preferably about 15. So I would end up with quite a sloppy and kind of ill-fitting pair of knickers if I continued with this fabric. So I've changed and I'm going to use this really lovely fabric. I've got a third of a metre and that's how much I've asked you to purchase and this one has a minimal amount of stretch so just a bit of comfort stretch there in the jersey so about 10% 15% stretch. To go with my fabric I've chosen a soft pink fold over elastic and I can either use that uh, uh, as the, uh, the shiny side there and I'm, I'm going towards the matte side quite like the matte side to go with this fabric. I'm going to apply fold over elastic to the legs and I want to apply just a traditional knicker elastic to the waist. The seam allowance I require on the waist is just the width of this solid part of the elastic here. You can see this is stretchy too. So we, in my um, article you can see the details on how to um, allow for the stretch percentage of the elastic and the fold over elastic and I do have a quite a detailed video on this as well that you can have a look 
at if you want to know more about how to measure and apply fold over elastic. Also, last thing we need here is a piece of just plain cotton jersey for the inside gusset. Even old t-shirts will do here, so um, if you're ch throwing away old worn soft jersey t-shirts, stop, keep them and they're great for, for gussets. So fabric selected and let's cut out. Just a few points to note before we finish cutting out. Pattern pieces are on the fabric. This is a third of a metre of fabric and you can see it's this is my size 22. It's comfortably fitting on there, so that's fine. Um, also, we want the degree of greater stretch. That's the amount the fabric stretches most going around the body. So we want to mark a line at 90 degrees to our centre front and centre back and mark that as the degree of greatest stretch and cut our pattern pieces out like this. I've cut out my front already and I've placed a notch here at the centre front. I'm going to cut my back out and place a notch there. I've also cut out my gusset pieces and I've got a notch in the centre of the gusset and at the centre of the front gusset and they're important when we sew. Also the elastic pieces, I cut out my waistband knicker elastic and my leg elastics. And if you want to know more about the measuring of these, I do have a video on how to measure and apply fold over elastic. So I have all my pieces, I'm going to finish cutting out and we're going to get over to the sewing machine. So let's get on and sew the gusset. I have my back pants with the right side up and my outside gusset with the right side down and underneath here I have my gusset lining and that's the side I want to show and that's the wrong side. Now my, here my notches become very important. So I'm going to line up the centre notch of the gusset lining with the centre notch of the back pants with the centre notch of the outside gusset. Now I only want one pin just to hold those together. Believe it or not, I don't use many pins when I sew. Um, more pins in here makes it difficult to sew because you need to manipulate these edges together when you get to the machine so that Hopefully you can see here that within the centimetre, so if I come back a centimetre from each of the edges, they all need to intersect. So those sections there need to all be together. And then I have a nice smooth line. So I'm going to take this over to the machine and I'm going to manipulate it with my fingers and sew a one centimetre seam from here to here. Now, you might think one centimetre is too much. You need the centimetre to be able to get it under the foot and to be able to sew it properly. And then we can always trim that down after if it's too bulky. So let's go over to the machine. So here I am at the sewing machine. I have my notches in the centre of each piece fixed with a pin. I've placed my gusset lining my back pants there so that they intersect at the centimetre seam allowance and then I guess it's all loose so that I can manipulate it so that that there intersects and just a little bit of pulling. Take that to the machine, taking my one centimetre seam allowance. You may want to just start fractionally on and then just a couple of stitches back tack. Now I'm free to take my pin out and manipulate these edges so that they're all together. Carry on. Stop with your needle down when you get to the notches and then we need to manipulate again here so that when we come to the centimetre seam allowance there 
that the edges are together and you match there and the top there and you don't need to go fast just be as accurate as you can and then just a tiny back tack there and off So hopefully when you pull these back, we will need to trim these edges, that you have a nice run there, straight. So we'll go back to the table and we'll plan the rest of the gusset. So let's do the final stage of the gusset sewing. This is an enclosed gusset, so we'll have a look at how to do that. I'm just going to trim down this excess seam allowance by half. So we have less bulk in there. And just pop that there, the gusset lining and the main gusset. We're going to take the front pants with the right side down and we're going to place the front pants notch to the front gusset notch and I'm just going to pin that nothing else I'm going to leave that loose now I'm going to roll this up And lay that there. Now I'm going to roll up the back. And lay that there. Grab these. Pick them up and just let that gusset hang down. Just going to flip it to there. Now my pinned piece here, take that, pick the gusset up and place that notch to there. So now I'm going to take my pin out, I'm going to reapply the pin so that all three of my notches are together. And I'm in the same position now where I have my front gusset seams lined up so that I can take them back to the machine and sew it in exactly the same way as I did the back gusset seam. So I'm going to stitch that now. So here we go, we line up the intersection of the seam allowances there. My notches are perfectly aligned. So I'm going to gently take this to the machine, keeping my one centimetre seam allowance again. Just a little tiny back tack there. Try not to drag the seams. In fact, if you are going to drag the seams, it's better not to back tack if your machine tends to do that. Stitch to the centre. Machine needle down. And then just readjust these seams. A little bit fiddly, but uh, much easier when you haven't pinned it all put down and then carry on stitching back to the intersection and then off. Okay so I must admit it does seem a little strange this way of sewing a gusset but it, it works. So both gussets seem sewn and then all we do is just pull this through and as if by magic we have an enclosed gusset. So all we need to do here is just trim off these tiny ears and we're ready to apply the binding to the legs. So I have my binding pieces cut and I'm going to apply 
the fold over elastic to the legs. Now I have a video on this, so I'm not going to cover this. I'm going to do it and I'll come back and then I'll show you how to finish off one of the side seams. Then we're going to apply the knicker elastic to the waist and we're almost done. The next stage is to sew the side seam. I've already sewn mine. I've used a serger or overlocker. Um, a, a stretch stitch or a zigzag is perfectly acceptable and this fabric won't fray. So um, just go ahead and use whatever you have. Just to show you here, um, my method for applying the fold over elastic, if you've watched the video, um, I have my little handles. I sew from the top to the bottom of the side seam and these handles, it just lets me hold it and make sure that the, they're perfectly aligned here. So if we have a look at this, then it's nice and straight. So the next stage is to apply the knicker elastic to the waist. I've measured my knicker elastic. I've got about 70% of the waist measurement as knicker elastic because it's fairly soft elastic. So I do want to pull it a little bit. I don't want my knickers to, to fall down when I'm running for the bus. So I'm going to quarter my elastic. So I fold it in half place a pin and then half again so at each quarter I have a pin and the same on my pants. All this lets me do is distribute the elastic evenly so I'm going to place the right side of the elastic to the right side of the pants and I'm going to pull so that this pin meets this pin whilst keeping the edge of the elastic to the edge of the fabric and I want my zigzag stitch to hit the edge there I don't want it to be any further back than the edge because then I'll see a little bit of the, um, the elastic band I don't want that so I'm going to take this over to the machine now and I'm going to apply this edge and that's the first pass of the elastic. I need to do two sections in the sewing of this. So let's sew this. The second stage of this application is to just turn it over and to just manipulate it with your fingers. I've still got my little end, my tail which is handy for stitching off and I'm going to hold that like that, pop it under the machine. This is where I find the tail really handy and it just gives me something to launch myself off. And I'm going to zigzag again all the way around the waist, just pulling it gently so that you have no creases. And this zigzag stitch will just hold down the elastic from the right side. So as you can see, the waist is finished and I've sewn the final side seam. 
so we're complete. Now don't forget this is a basic block. In the next part of the article I'm going to have a look at how you can adapt this to um, a range of different styles. So it's just meant to fit you, it's not supposed to be um, you know, a, a fantastic style. Um, so we're going to try them on the model and see how they fit. Okay, so here we have our finished panty style. Don't forget it's a basic block um, and this is part two of our three part series. In part three, uh, over on the sewing directory, we're going to have a look at how to develop this basic style into a range of different styles. And you can find the th all three articles over on the sewing directory eventually. And also you can find the free panties block in a range of sizes on my blog page. So just let's have a look at the fit. We have a look at her here. She's happy with the fit at the front. She's happy with the fit at the side. And the only thing I'd say is it does dip down a little bit at the back. Now she might be happy with that in that you don't want your panty to show above your trousers. So, you know, the, it's quite acceptable for them to dip down a little bit. But there's no problem to raise that. And if you look at the second article in the series, then you there's a range of um, diagrams on there uh, that show you how to adjust different elements of the fit of this block. So you're aiming to get this basic block to fit you perfectly. So I'll see you next time and hopefully you'll subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.